old farmer Dre back at it. I just got back from our local produce auction. Bought some melons today, some watermelon, cantaloupe, and uh, gotta get go ahead and get started unloading this. And I was gonna go ahead and uh, start working this morning. Isaac comes out to me and tells me, Farmer Dre, there's no more melons in the cooler. So I had to hurry up and uh, I didn't realize what day it was. Wednesday, so I went over to our produce auction, bought some uh, watermelon cantaloupe. We usually get them out of the boot hill of Missouri whenever we go down there and pick up peaches. But since we had plenty of peaches in our cooler, we didn't go down there this week. So whenever we uh, don't have enough from the boot hill, we go down to the produce auction and get some. So I got to go ahead and unload these out and then put them in the in the warehouse there. The melons just stay in the warehouse and the cantaloupes go in our uh, tomato cooler there. So um, yeah, not too bad. These are some uh, the varieties on these are sweet gems, seedless. This sort of like a sugar baby, super good, sweet, delicious seedless melon. Then we got some sandrias here. And uh, one thing that I might do next year is on top of the old strawberry beds that were uh, after the strawberries done, instead of planting squash and zucchini stuff, I might try to grow some melons in there as well. So I don't know, just thinking about it, melons are a, a big part of our farm. We sell quite a bit of melons here, but we don't grow any because we bring them in and sell them that way. But hey, you never know. Anyways. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the skid steer, unload these. So the pallet forks is on the skid steer. That's one thing I kind of hate doing is changing the forks. We gotta readjust this one right here. As you can tell, it's kind of off center. Here. Kind of push that. And there you go. Just like that. Jump in the skid steer and get started. Ugh. There you go. Let it beep. Wait for the gold plugs. There you go. Turn it on, seat belt, parking brake. And my dad always gets really mad at us if we um, just jump in the equipment and don't let it warm up. Run about, wait about 30 seconds here, back her out of here and then get going. So I just realized that I'm kind of a dingleberry. I should unstrap these before I got the skist here. What is wrong with me? I could blame it on the heat of the summer. Oh, Monday, it was miserable out here. It was like 100, it was more like 90 some degrees. 100% chance of humidity, it was miserable. You walk outside and then you just start sweating. And just sweating by just, whenever you just breathe, you sweat. Imagine when you actually start working. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna unstrap these. Uh, under that ratchet strap one-handed. Oh, I got a magnetic mount, what am I doing? I guess I'm a rookie to the C2 game. Cheapers. Oh, having a hard time. Under this ratchet here. Jeez. What is wrong with me? There we go. 22 year old boy can't even undo a ratchet strap. <sighs> Generation Z. I tell you. I tell you. There we go. Told you guys. You just work a little bit and you're drenched in sweat here. But I want to go ahead and let you guys in on a little secret. So by the time you guys watch this video tomorrow, I'm going to be turning an old man. Actually, my birthday's tomorrow, August 13th. I'll be turning 23. Yeah, I'm getting old. I'm getting old.
So just like that, the melons are unloaded. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put these away here and just store them right here. Like I said, these sandrias are real nice. And one thing we like to do every single time we bring in melons is uh, crack one open and taste one. So I already took one in the store there. Super good and delicious, super sweet. I mean, it ain't summer without peaches and watermelon. I am the reigning pallet jack champion here at Gardner's Orchard. <laughs> I'm just joking around. But I probably move most produce around. If it's not peaches, it's uh, melons. And if it's not melons, it's produce. And oh, Fun stuff, fun stuff. So now I'm gonna move this uh, well, uh, cantaloupe here in our tomato cooler back there. And as you guys can see, it's about 55 degrees in there. And the reason you wanna store cantaloupe, they're just like tomatoes. You know, if you, if you store them too cold, then they lose a lot of their flavor and their texture. But if you store them at the right temperature, about 55, 60 degrees, they still stay fresh and uh, they stay crunchy and hard so that the uh, whenever the customer takes them home, you know, they, should, they just have a nice melon. And it makes it a lot easier on our part as, uh, as we're selling them so they won't go bad as quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open the tomato cooler here. And uh, we have a few from last week. We gotta take out, put on top, and then we'll throw, throw these in there. And let me tell you guys something. Loading watermelons, or not watermelons, cantaloupe by yourself, it's a pain. I might have one of my sisters come out here and help me because it's, it's already hot. Look at that. Sweating, sweating, sweating like crazy. Told you guys, 100% chance of humidity today. So these are all the cantaloupe we have left over from last week here. And uh, they're starting to get a lot of soft spots here. Though I'm just gonna throw it to the cows right there. But some of these are still pretty good. I mean, we left them in the warehouse for a couple of days, which we shouldn't have, but live and learn. So for the ones that are in the produce industry, you guys know, you can't always have the 100% uh, of our crop to be sold. So we do throw, you know, probably wagon like this a week away of produce and whatnot, but some weeks even more, some weeks not. So cows are gonna enjoy that. That's some of the reason we only have cows, because they eat all the good, good produce. Then we feed them all the leftovers from the apple cider and whatnot. So anyways, gotta throw those out. Start putting these in. Just like that, I believe there's 70 cantaloupe in here. So, uh, I mean, these are 10 plus pounds a piece. We actually weighed one out. Let me walk out here real quick. We actually weighed a cantaloupe out that they grew, the Amish grew, uh, about a week ago, and it was 14.97 pounds. And the reason I wanted, uh, you know, I went there today to so ask them a bunch of questions. You guys know how I am. Keep on learning, keep on growing. So, I talked to one of the farmers out there, a grower. And he said that, especially on cantaloupe, whenever they, um, you know, you grow out your plant, plenty of vine out there, so they just feed them like a triple 20 fertilizer to get them enough uh, N, P, and K out there. But then whenever the cantaloupe, you know, they start having, you know, anywhere from a golf ball to like a softball size, they start feeding them that high potassium fertilizer, the same, the same fertilizer we have for our tomatoes. They put on about 50 pounds of that a week on the cantaloupe field. So then instead of a matter of two to three weeks, they'll go from a softball size to, you know, you know that 14 pound or, or the average about 10 pound melon in that, in that time period. Then they feed them, you know, they consistently feed them, feed them that high potassium fertilizer so that they go ahead and start sizing up and then they ripen a whole lot quicker. So I, I got tired of sweating out there in the warehouse. <laughs> anyway, this is one of the uh, Sandrias right here. Nice seeded melon, long ones, super sweet, delicious really good i mean you always get get the heart of the melon there you see if i could uh cut a melon you're left-handed mmm mmm so good so sweet so delicious mm-hmm nothing better than the fresh watermelon so for the ones that didn't know we have a bakery here on the farm kind of circle around here and then one of my older sisters she's actually a pastry chef so she makes all the pastries and stuff for us here on the farm. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think believe yeah, some made. Here we go. Yeah. So they got all kinds of those, those are uh, cheese Danish there. 
All kinds of blueberry and cream danish right there. Mm, mm, mm. So good. As you guys can tell here by my girlish figure, you know, I've eaten a little too many of them. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah. And pretty soon here, I'm planning on making a video with them in the bakery. So you guys stay tuned for that. So I don't know if you guys experienced this, but whenever you eat too much watermelon, you kind of get a little bloated. Anyways, I got to go connect our stock trailer because uh, we had a flatbed trailer that we had to get repaired. Do some stuff at the actuals. It's actually my brother Radu's. But we got to repair now. I got to go connect the, uh, got to go pick it up. But my dad wants our stock trailer fixed. We're having some problems there with the uh, lights and the connection on the brakes and whatnot. Then also the bearings need to be replaced. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go to uh, his place there. He just lives about 15 minutes north of us. I'm going to take our animal trailer there and pick up the flatbed trailer and come back home. So man, today's turning into a day of travel. More of a day of I got to be on the road. That's one thing I don't like is being on the road too much. But sometimes you have to. And uh, you know, it is what it is. But we got to get done. So I'm going to go ahead and try to connect this stock trailer by myself. Alrighty, so the good old backing up by herself didn't work too well. Had to move the truck a few more times, but the reason we gotta fix this trailer is because when you can't plug in the brakes, or you can't plug in the lights because the brakes stay locked on the trailer. So that guy's a professional at fixing trailers, so take it to him real quick. So if you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever I do upload a video. I want to say thanks for watching up to this point. You guys have a good day. We'll see you next time.